The design of this tiny house was really based around something that could travel all the time. Obviously I've seen so many tiny houses now and I've got a lot of different inspiration from a lot of different places. But for me this design was really about taking a lot of those big tiny house design features and making them work in a very compact and very small home. When Bryce came to me to do uh, this build, I was intrigued. It was uh, a pretty unique design and it kind of targets a different type of market. And so with talking with him, we sort of figured out the best way to make it happen and it's gonna be a nice house. Working together, I really feel like we've honed and refined this design into a very special home. So here we are, now actually building a tiny house on wheels. This is such an incredible feeling. The trailers are super important to us. We're very specific on the designs that we use. Foundation Trailers is an excellent place to get those. And in partner with those guys, we made a design built for us. So it's now day one of the build. We're gonna take a look over the trailer and find out all about the foundation that the house is gonna be built on. Mike, how you doing, man? Hey, man, how you doing? I'm good. Good, good. Awesome. Looking forward to getting stuck into things. Yeah, definitely, it's gonna be fun. So, here is our trailer. She's yep. looking very shiny. That little 16 foot trailer. We're pretty particular about our trailers. So, for us, the main frame is built out of all tube steel. All right, that's important. Uh, we have our side flanges that come out, take a bend to create the eight foot wide that we need. We have D-rings on all four corners so that you can strap your homes down to the ground in a high wind area. Uh, from there, just on this side, you can see the lights that come on the trailer, all DOT lighting in the United States are required to have all the lights. If you see here, this is what we call a structural fender. So we can build straight onto our fender versus having to head her over. You can see in the main area of it here, the belly pan. It's something that we do on all our trailers as well. Nobody wants to have an open bottom trailer, right? And especially for DIYers, you don't want to have to put that on yourself. It is horrible to do. So our manufacturers, it comes standard. You take a look here at this corner jack. All our trailers uh, have these as well. On the front here, of course you have your front tongue jack. We like to use an adjustable coupler. You've got all your safety chains. You also have your breakaway kit. But from there, that's pretty much about it to a normal tiny house trailer. So first up, we're gonna be insulating and getting the subfloor ready. We're gonna fill the cavity full of insulation. And then of course, we're gonna use our uh, waterproof subfloor that goes down. And then in between that, we'll have a vapor barrier as well. Once the floor was laid down, it was then time to erect the steel frame. This part of the build is actually tremendously fun and quickly transforms the trailer into something which resembles a house. With our uh, partners with Volstruct um, who provide our framing for us, um, their machine literally prints the studs, dimples, all the screw holes, so they're all flush, everything is perfect within a millimeter of tolerance over the whole thing, right? So once we get that in, uh, all our walls are called, are called panelized. They're put together for us. So all we have to do is put the panels together and of course straighten everything up, secure it properly. We literally, in a 16 foot house for sure, we just pick up the walls and set them on the trailer all the way around. We use a bunch of clamps to secure them temporarily. Uh, now we're just kind of temporarily setting some of these and then we're gonna go around and start tweaking the frame to where we know where it's set. That way we can start clamping it in its proper space, putting some bolts in it. Then once we get it kind of racked out, then we'll come back and really secure these two pieces because it's all based off the actual square of the frame. Then of course from there you do your bolt downs and your pattern with 5H bolts through a Simpson bracket that's really tall, really strong. And once you've finally done all of that, you've literally locked that frame down to the trailer. So we've now got all of the walls up and the roof comes next. That's going to be a little bit tricky because it's also one of the heaviest parts, so we're actually going to need to use the four coist just to help us get us up there, but hopefully once it's up, it'll be pretty easy to put in place and attach. Watching the steel go up is really cool because it just happens so fast. You're sort of sitting there with an empty trailer one minute, and then within the space of a few hours, the whole steel frame just gets erected. It's actually really cool to see. All right, we're about to start sheathing the frame. We're gonna go around and look for any dead pockets that we can insulate later, like for example, this one right here. We'll go ahead and insulate this now. We'll go ahead and zip wall the whole thing and tape it up. And if you'll look around, you can kind of see we're pretty much all screwed down. Uh, a couple more hurricane straps to go around the top. They've got the other side done. Uh, but from there, it's just sheathing and moving on. Sheathing this house, uh, we chose to go with a, a zip wall product. Now, 
With the type of uh, breathable membrane system we use, we could have not done that, um, but it's just abundant for our company. We always have it here, so we just went ahead and used it anyway. But um, from there, it's just a structural sheathing that goes on your house. There's other kinds, but we chose Zipwall with this one. At this stage, we also made a start on the plumbing and electrical wiring. The electrical system needs to be well thought out, with both 12 and 110 volt circuits running in the home. Well, we're about to do a little wiring. Uh, we just started running the lights and some of the switches for these guys. We got our grommets in the wall for our wires to go through. And of course, we'll go through here, measure everything out, get everything centered, and we should be able to wrap up the wiring tonight. We also got stuck into fixing the fascias and preparing the subroof. Next, we started the process of installing the building's membranes. For this, we used a special Healthy Homes package from Mainstream Corporation, which essentially builds the home up to passive house standards. For me, it's essential that a home is healthy. You need to be able to really feel like you can breathe deep in your space, and that's the reason why we've chosen to use the Healthy Home Package from Mainstream Corporation in this build. It includes EcoBat insulation, it includes the building wraps, both the Mento exterior building wrap as well as the Intello interior building wrap which helps to perfectly regulate all of the moisture that can potentially be inside a tiny house or form inside a tiny house making sure that there's no possibility of mold build up in our walls. What we're also going to be doing is we're also going to include a Lunos heat recovery ventilation system that will actually allow the whole house to breathe. So this whole system works together to ensure that the tiny house is breathing that the moisture content is regulated, that it's warm, that it's cozy, that it's dry, that it's safe, that it's healthy. And I am a huge fan of all of those things. With the exterior membrane complete, it was also time to start installing the windows. The windows for this project are provided by Plygem. They're a double pane, low E, argon filled windows. Uh, they came in a nice little code that we chose. They all crank out, um, I believe all of them are a casement window and some of the bigger ones are doubles. And in the bathroom, we did the casements with obscure glass so that you can take showers and do the things you need to do, uh, but you can't see in. At this stage, we also insulated the home. We used earth wool insulation. It was tricky to make sure all the cavities were filled as often there were some pretty tight spaces to cram into the steel frame. Still, it's worth taking the time to get it right and make sure that the home is well insulated. Now, I have been putting insulation and cramming it into these little holes that I continue to find in it. It is a lot of work and I feel like every single time I look at the insulation I'm finding more holes and more things that I need to do with it but uh, right now I'm just gonna call it good. I've been working on it all afternoon and I think that we're finally at a place where I'm comfortable to wrap the building. So the trick is we now have to pretty much create an airtight envelope using this membrane around the entire structure of the building, which is, I think, going to be a bit of a challenge, but uh, we'll soon find out. Uh, this is going to be going not only on the walls, but also on our subfloor and our ceiling, so the whole building should be airtight. The membrane system adds huge performance value to the home. Still, installation was a tremendous amount of work and definitely resulted in a lack of sleep. Shall be part of the building. Oh, uh, I am so warm part now. Of the building. I can breathe better already. <laughs> okay, bye bye. I do believe that this is going to be a really high performance building. Whether or not Mike will speak to me after the night is an entirely different question. Can I think about? <laughs> I comment later when I'm awake, when I'm less tired, because I think my answer might change. <laughs> well, how I feel now that I might feel in the morning. <laughs> Once we probably put all this around, Mike will go home, and I'm probably going to be spending all night taping this place up. Mm -hmm. you better. You better. There's no question about it, though. It was worth it in the end. There are going to be so many holes for this. It's now about 1.30 in the morning. Mike and Will have just gone home and I am gonna try and get as much of this place sealed and taped up as possible before the morning so that when people come in, we can actually start the interior lining. So, it's gonna be a long night. And it was. Still, with the house wrapped up like a giant airtight present, it was now time to start on the interior lining. We're lining this home with tongue and groove pine boards. 
While the lads were busy installing the interior boards, Mike, Will and I turned our attention to the shower room. My whole idea for the interior design of the house was almost to make it like a Japanese tea house where you come into this sort of small entranceway and the house opens up in front of you. So we've centered the doorway on the back of the tiny house. So you walk in and then you're going to actually have two bathrooms. You're going to have one bathroom to your left hand side which has the toilet and the vanity and then we're going to have over to the right hand side the shower room. We're essentially building a waterproof room so that the whole shower can be its own room in this house. So waterproofing is really important. Right now what we're doing is we are uh, working out a ply face that we can put all around the shower room that later on we'll be able to put the finished Galvalume face on. Uh, so that's what we're working out right now, just cutting around and making it all work. We've now built the entire box for the shower, so you can see that we've lined all of the walls with ply. So we're gonna be using a roll-on waterproofing material that we are just gonna coat this whole room in. And then on top of that, we're gonna be placing the Galvalume. The shower design was really tricky. I think there's a good chance that I've actually given Mike a few more gray hairs with that one. The shower itself, even though it turned out great, it was a giant, giant pain in the rear. Uh, because you can't buy anything stock for it. You can't buy a shower pan, any of the other features, you just can't get them. So you have to literally make everything. So we had to make a Galvalume pan. We had to make Galvalume wall pan. We made a uh, Galvalume roof pan. And then of course trimmed all out in tiger wood. And so, like I said, it turned out nice, but it was a super big pain in the rear. At this stage, we're still waiting on some of our exterior cladding and roofing material to arrive. So we continue to push on with the interior. We've just finished putting the vacuum barrier down on the floor, and now it is time for all of the flooring to be installed. We're installing a hard-wearing laminate flooring. We cut the boards to size and create a staggered pattern with the cuts. For this, we take our time with the installation to ensure that all the boards were tight to each other and that we were keeping straight lines in the house. When it comes to cabinetry in the tiny house, everything needs to be built from scratch. For such small spaces, there really are no off-the-shelf solutions, which means that everything needs to be custom built to fit the space, including the bed. Storage is always a problem in any tiny house, and when you're building one that's this size, it's a huge problem. The most sensible solution that I could think of in this space was actually just to build storage in under the bed. The space under a bed is not really incredibly practical for anything, but when you think of the size of a bed, it actually offers a tremendous amount of floor area. Obviously the bed takes up quite a bit of space in a 16 foot house. And so what we did was we actually made it lift open. That way underneath the bed you have a giant storage area. We've actually tucked the water heater in there and a couple other little things, but even with that you still have plenty of room to put all your goods. One of the trickiest things to work out on the build was the television lift. For this, we're trying to fit in both a queen-sized bed and a cabinet with a television lift into a very tight space. We've got Brad from Woodtrist who is doing an incredible job helping us out with our cabinetry inside the house, as well as helping us out with one little troublesome item. That TV lift that we're working on, it is such a cool feature in the home, but it's not really designed to be working in a small space, so we're doing our best to build the cabinetry around it to get that television as close to the wall as possible and still actually be able to build it in an enclosed cabinet while still fitting a queen-sized bed into the space. And it's really not easy. To help, I modified the lift mechanism to try and make it lower profile to fit into the space a bit easier. Moment of truth. Oh wow, that's a ton of extra space. It's four and eight. Four and eight now. Was three and eight. Dude, good job. While we're working on that, the rest of the team pushed on with the shower room, fitting the Galvalume siding and adding the trim to the bathroom. Over the other side, the vanity is installed as well as a nature's head composting toilet. In this particular project, we actually went with a composting toilet, a nature's head. It's a really nice unit, functions very well, and it's not super large, so it fits in about the same footprint as a normal toilet. But what we also did was we actually plumbed it uh, for a normal toilet also. With a limited supply of hot water in the tiny house, we chose to use a special shower system which atomizes the water. This shower is designed to retrofit into an existing bathroom, but it comes with its own challenges when it comes to fitting it into a tiny house on wheels. 
So we went with this Nivea uh, shower system that itemizes the water, so you only use about 0.75 gallons a minute, which is gonna help save water, because they've only got a seven gallon water heater. But when we installed it, we realized that it's not designed for travel whatsoever. We've screwed it to the wall, but we're still really worried about movement. You can see here when this is actually, with very, very little pressure, there's quite a lot of strain that's gonna be put on the water hookup back here. So we had to really customize some brackets and some stuff with tiger wood to make sure that essentially it didn't destroy itself. Uh, Cause I bet you wouldn't make it 10 miles foot broke. Now the function of it's gonna work great, but we just had to change it a little bit so that it wasn't so loose rocking around. And so uh, I think now it actually looks pretty cool. The kitchen design was a really interesting one. I wanted to make it as compact as possible while still being really functional. The priorities were to create as much counter space as possible. So to do that, we've used a really small sink and then we haven't actually built in any cooktops onto the space. So it just keeps it all open. Another priority in the space was storage. So we wanted to have a good set of drawers, a good amount of area underneath the sink, and then also to be able to nicely fit our refrigerator. And this unit, the kitchen cabinetry was done by Wittrist. Uh, he's a good friend of mine here local, builds all our cabinets. Uh, he did a really nice job. The desk area in this particular unit was uh, not too much of a challenge being small, but we just basically mimicked um, almost exactly to the kitchen space. Only thing we did was we made the countertop a little bit shorter, otherwise it just gets a little too tight. And it's just got some nice little uh, cubbies on the right side with some drawers in it for just in general storage. And then off to the left was all the electrics, um, panel, DC panel, and then of course the battery sits underneath. All right, well, our RV panel is done. We have our AC side our DC side. Inside here we have a converter to run all the DC parts, but uh, yeah, I should wrap it up. This home is designed to be primarily on grid. However, we've also installed a small 80 amp hour AGM battery, which is able to power the home's 12 volt services all while on the move. This gives us the ability to use the 12 volt lights, fridge, composting toilet, all without being connected to mains power. This battery is charged when the home is plugged in, but also takes power from the vehicle's alternator when driving, and wires have been run for a solar panel to be hooked up in the future. With the interior nearing completion and the cladding materials now on site, we can turn our attention to the home's exterior. We're using a mixture of standing seam metal as well as quality edge true cedar siding. This product is made from steel and is foam back to add insulation value, making it a lightweight and durable option perfectly suited to tiny houses. Cladding is really important. When it comes to the tiny house, this is something which is traveling, so it's going to have impact from road debris and all of that sort of thing. It's also something that we really want to stand the test of time. We've chosen to use two different cladding options in this house to break up the visual aspect of it as well. So one of the exterior cladding materials that we're using is standing seam roofing metal. This is the same stuff that's actually gonna be used on our roof, and we're breaking that up with true cedar. So together, that's gonna to make a really nice exterior aesthetic for the house. The roof on this house, we went with a black standing seam roof. We actually double layered the house because it's a flat roof. And so underneath it, we also have the same exterior vapor bear as it is on the side of the walls. And it's all taped up nice and neat. And then of course you have the standing seam on top. Some of the biggest challenges with a flat roof is actually finding a roof that is uh, allowed to be on flat. There's no pits for the water or snow to go anywhere. So whatever roofing material you choose, it has to be dedicated to it so the water can't get back in. The roof has just finished being installed and it looks so good. I'm really happy with how that's turned out. On this project, the roof was the last thing to be installed. With that now complete, we could move the house outside to see the finished result in the daylight and touch up anything that needed it. Seeing the home move outside of the workshop for the very first time was an amazing experience and it definitely made all of the hard work over the last three weeks very worth it. I'll definitely admit that I'm not the easiest person to work with, I'm super picky. Uh, if something is off, I will see it in an instant. And so I'm probably a builder's nightmare. I gotta tell you, uh, Bryce can be a little bit of a diva. And I say that because he's so particular in a lot of ways, uh, which is not wrong, but it does make your build process quite challenging because 
obviously we have our ways. I'm very particular too, so I get it a little bit. I'm a little diva too. Um, but I'm really specific on how we build it, what we build it with, and why, um, so that our houses turn out great and are strong. And so you take that with uh, emails, all right? Then you take that with, he's finally here, and you've got no time to build something. Um, it can be quite frustrating. The cool part was we did learn some things. And so he wanted to use some products we'd never used. Um, and so those had their own learning curve. And so we got to use them, which is pretty cool. We learned some stuff, and we can incorporate that now into some other things. It was fun to teach him things um, as far as like how to build some stuff. He, he kind of jumped right in there, which was pretty cool. I wondered if he would. You never know with these YouTube guys. Uh, they might just want to watch the whole time. But no, he did good. He, he wanted to work. He wanted to do things. And so we taught him how to make some boxes, some drawers, some cabinets, just different things um, that he was comfortable doing, of course. And they turned out really nice. So a lot of the things you'll see in his house are actually he did, which is pretty cool. I think it actually makes the house a little bit better. I am not a builder. Uh, before starting on the tiny house journey, I had absolutely no practical skills. I've managed to pick up a few things here and there, but I still really want to get involved. I still really want to get my hands dirty and get in. And uh, Mike has been really awesome in helping to actually guide me in some things, uh, showing me what I need to do, and actually allowing me to get stuck in on my own build and actually make sure that my sweat and my blood is still going into the tiny house as well, uh, while still working under the guidance of somebody that actually knows what they're doing, which is really important, because I don't. Well, now that the unit's completed, I mean, it's just been a, a crazy, crazy time. You know, you take design time that you're cramming into, not, a lot, not enough time, actually, and then you get all your guys in here and you just literally go to town trying to build something super quick that would take probably more than a couple weeks. It's, um, I mean, obviously it's relieving in one way. It is uh, gratifying, of course. Um, it just turned out so nice and it's gonna be a nice house. This project is the culmination, not only of a few weeks building, but months of design and working everything out to construct what we've finally built here. And you know, I, I really just can't even express how incredible it feels after pouring all of that work into the tiny house to now actually see it realized. And she is every bit as beautiful as I'd hoped.